we're going into my apartment here at the intersection of Vosnesiansky and Kazanskaya. Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel Inside St. Petersburg, Russia. In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to a lady from the US, an English teacher working in St. Petersburg, Russia since the past year. Her name is Jamie and I'm going to ask a few questions about her life here in St. Petersburg, Russia. Enjoy! Roberts. I'm an American English teacher in St. Petersburg, originally from Denver, Colorado in the United States. I've been living here since September of 2019, which is a little over a year and a half now. It'll be a year and a half this fall. Well, I studied Russian as a child, uh, starting in the seventh grade and through uh, junior high, high school, and college. I came here first in high school and again in college, um, first outside of Moscow and then to St. Petersburg. Uh, I had a real dream to be here, but at that time, uh, the Soviet Union had just collapsed. So there was no time for a 21-year-old American girl to be here. Um, but I uh, used my Russian now and then, and 20 years later, I'm really happy to have found work here and to be living comfortably in the country that I studied my whole life. I think St. Petersburg is one of the most beautiful cities in Europe. This is the first foreign city that I fell in love with when I came here as an exchange student, and I feel really lucky to be here now. Um, of course, Moscow is cool too, but it's very chaotic. It's a little bit different vibe. Um, I'm usually happiest in the second city, so Chicago in the United States, and uh, maybe Berlin in Germany is a little smaller than Munich. And St. Petersburg is a nice, comfortable five and a half million here in Russia. Um, it wasn't difficult at all for me, really. It was even less difficult than I thought. Of course, it takes uh, some two and a half months to get an actual work visa processed and passports and such. But uh, when there finally was a job for me here, uh, I was so quick to move here from Berlin. And because I speak the language and I know the city from when I lived here in 1996 and visited in 97, it felt a little bit like coming home. And uh, I really think that that's a kind of miracle. My first impressions of St. Petersburg when I came here first as a teenager were just how grand all of the buildings were, how everything looked like a palace. There was marble and malachite and amber and things that you had seen in tiny rings and jewelry everywhere. Uh, also the water. I come from the high desert in Colorado. Uh, the rivers are mostly half dried up. You have snow and it melts. But here you have canals and rivers and the water is so much a feature of life around you and I think it's really beautiful. Um, I love living on a city built on, I think it's 108 islands, maybe that's not correct. But uh, it's, it's kind of a magical environment when you grew up in a very, very dry place. I really enjoy, it's the perfect size. Um, five and a half million is enough to really be something. But it's not uh, 12 million like Moscow or 20 million like Istanbul. It's somehow manageable. Uh, you feel the pulse of the city and the people, even in the pandemic when there are less people and less tourists, you feel like it's really a city and works like a city. But it's really beautiful. Around every corner in the historic center, you see a view, a sunset, clouds, even moody clouds like today are gorgeous and moving. 
There are cathedrals everywhere. And in the summer, it's just brilliant. White nights and trees and flowers. And the, the sun goes down at 10 or 11. And it comes up at 2 or 3 in the morning. Uh, certainly, uh, it's not so inexpensive to live in this beautiful historical center. And if you live out in the residential blocks on the edges of the metro stations, it's quite towers of apartments. It's maybe not so beautiful. There's nice parks between them. But uh, this lifestyle is not really for me. And that's a large part of the people who live here who have this lifestyle. So it's really part of the city. You can't ignore it. Not everyone lives next to St. Isaac's Cathedral. Um, I find it difficult uh, to integrate. I do my best. I speak Russian. I have local friends. I spend time with Russians. But uh, you still don't speak the language and you don't have a dacha and your grandmother doesn't live down the street and pick up your kids. And you really have to work to make connections. And uh, a lot of English teachers make connections with other teachers. But the other teachers tend to be young or uh, with their Russian partner or starting young families. And while all of this is great, I don't have a lot in common with that. I also think it's hard to come to a city as a single person. It does give you the freedom to settle where you want and do what you want. Um, but in the end, meeting partners and friends and people to spend your time with is difficult anywhere. Russia is really a southern country. You have warmth, the warmth you might find in Belgrade or in Italy. You have it here, warm people, social people. But they're busy and they have their own lives. And finding the people who want to make space for you in their lives is kind of another full-time job. But I think that uh, making connections with other expats and with other locals, if you really invest in it, you can go far in this country. Yes, I think this is one of the safest cities I've ever lived in. Um, you can walk on the streets at night, nobody will bother you. Um, if somebody has been drinking, they may talk to you, but they're talking to you because they want to engage with you, they're not threatening you. I very rarely feel threatened here. I think Russian people are really unique and charming. I really feel the warmth of uh, the South, whether it's the Ukrainian roots, whether it's the Central Asian culture coming in. People always have an idea of hosting guests. They always welcome you in their homes. They take care of you. They care about you. Um, I find that Russian people engage. They really ask questions. They really want to know about you. They're very honest. Um, of course, there are some cultural differences between America and Russia, uh, but overall, I think that Americans and Russians have quite a lot in common, and we get along, for the most part, very well. The places I visit every year include Nizhny Novgorod, Pskov, of course, Moscow. Um, I hope to be able to visit Kazan at some point. I was in Kaliningrad earlier this year. Um, there are certainly wonderful friends in Samara, Voronezh. I will run out of vacation time before I run out of people in interesting corners of Russia to visit. Um, but also, uh, certainly regionally in the Baltics, in Scandinavia, in Eastern and Western Europe, but especially Eastern Europe, I've spent a lot of time traveling and visiting the different capitals of the East. Um, I would say that I speak um, at an upper intermediate level of confidence. I write maybe in a high intermediate level of confidence. I don't write quickly or easily, and I feel kind of stupid like everyone does in their second language when you can't speak poetically and beautifully like you do in your first language. But um, I think people appreciate when you can speak to them in their language, even if you make mistakes. Um, and I think it makes you more welcome. You said to me for leaving you're an English teacher, right? Mm -hmm. I am. Uh, uh, maybe some people who are looking at us right now, they're wondering, how can I teach in Russia? How can I become an English teacher in Russia? So uh, what advice would you give to someone who's thinking about to teach English in Russia? Well, um, it used to be a long time ago, there was maybe a myth, maybe not a myth, that if you just came here and you did nothing else and you spoke English, of course you would be an English teacher. 
Um, I think that's really a myth nowadays because in order to get a visa as an English teacher, you have to have a degree, you have to have credentials. I have my CELTA certificate from Cambridge. You have to have some teaching experience. And honestly, if you really want to teach in Russia, you will do very well if you like teaching small children and teenagers. Maybe four-fifths of the market here is young learners. Um, and I think a lot of people come here and they're like, oh, yes, I can teach English. And then you say, well, you're going to be teaching five to seven-year-olds. Are you qualified for that? Are you equipped for that? Are you ready for that? And even if you have five to seven-year-olds, having 20 or 30 of them is a whole different thing. And doing that for five to eight hours is a whole different thing. The other thing, there's a lot of business in Moscow, not so much here, is that there are families with small children, uh, so governess or in-house teacher or nanny or or even just in-house teacher, not quite nanny positions, they pay extremely well. International schools, if you have uh, qualifications, your PGSE, you can make three and four times what I make as a private teacher. I believe that it is possible, but I wouldn't say it's easy. If you don't speak the language, you have the first problem, which is that the only people who are marketing to you are people who also speak your language, whether it's English or German or Italian. So I think that a lot of people have an idea that it will be easy to work here or find a job here, but if you don't have some basic Russian skills, it's very difficult to work in an office. It's even very difficult to work in an English school where the majority of our administrative staff don't have strong English skills. And the majority of the students' parents don't have strong English skills. I had a whole talk unplanned with one of my students' parents today when they came into the class after the final lesson. And he asked if I could speak in Russian, Moshna Poruski, and I did my best. But in reality, I think that unless you work for a foreign national company full of foreign national employees or you work remotely in that fashion, even if you're an IT worker, and I think there's a lot of IT jobs here, your team is communicating with each other and with clients, mostly in Russian. And so I think you can absolutely find a job, but it's probably 500% easier if you have some Russian skills. I really miss the high desert landscape of Colorado. I have always missed Colorado, New Mexico, and the American Southwest is one of the most beautiful desert landscapes. You're so high, the air is so dry, you are never sweating. I think I've never sweat so much as when I left home. Um, I miss southwestern food and peppers and hominy and pasoli and things that you can't get here easily. Um, I, of course, miss family and friends in the States. I have a really big community of tango friends and theater friends and, and friends from my youth and growing up. I think uh, there's differences on a couple of different levels. If we want to say, are there differences between Western countries, meaning Scandinavia, Western Europe, and the US as compared to Russia, uh, with Russia being part of Eastern Europe, we have a difference between Western Europe and Eastern Europe. I think that we also have a big difference between Europe, uh, where the EU countries are, and European Russia, and Asian Russia. <laughs> we are a mixture of East and West here. And when I say East and West, I don't only mean Eastern Europe, Western Europe, I also mean Central Asia, and Asia, and Europe. And you can find similar characteristics in Turkey and Istanbul in other places that are on the edge between the West and the East. Um, and you have a certain sense of Western freedom, conversation, culture, style, people expressing themselves. And at the same time, you have a certain sense of responsibility and family and tradition and the way things sh should be done. And maybe in St. Petersburg, we feel the least tethered to that East-West mix. But if you go somewhere like, say, uh, you meet someone from Kazan or from Tatarstan or from some of the more eastern parts of Russia, it's even stronger. Um, I think there is some discrimination against Americans based on the idea that we all have extra money or European jobs or some kind of huge income. And certainly some of us do, but I mean certainly some Russians do as well. Uh, what's really important for me when I establish relationships here is to say that I am living on a Russian salary, working in a Russian job, living in a Russian apartment, 
and that while I am American and I bring my Americanness with me wherever I go, I also am a Russian migrant worker teaching English in St. Petersburg, and I try as much as I can to emphasize my sameness in that way. I believe it's a difficult question in some ways because uh, the first question I might answer is, do I believe there's freedom of speech in America, the land of the free and the home of the brave? And sure there is, but there are consequences when you make choices to express certain ideas. And I think it's true here as well. Um, one of the things I decided when I moved to Russia and when I decided I was going to be teaching, especially young people, that I knew that there is a bias here. Um, against certain groups of people, against certain ways of thinking. Um, there are things I could do which could jeopardize my position as a long-term migrant mm -hmm. residing in Russia. That said, I think that I also strongly believe that I can do more living here and touching these people and talking to them within the amount of speech that I can freely express without causing a problem than I ever could screaming new information on the other side of the border, even in Latvia, even 30 minutes on the other side of the border in Europe. Because there's something about interacting with people and showing them freedom and giving them speech, giving them English, giving them the opportunity to express themselves. Understanding that there's a cultural dimension and a governmental dimension. Um, if you want to have pure freedom, of course, move to Berlin, move to the US. That freedom will cost you three to four times more in cost of living and you will enjoy it, but it's not free. I think Russia is a bad place to live if you want to live somewhere different. I think Russia is an amazing place to live if you want to live in Russia. Uh, you take the good with the bad. Uh, maybe you don't get to have spices in your food. Maybe you don't have Thai food for five euros on every corner like you do in Berlin. Maybe you uh, give up a certain amount of freedoms or a certain amount of uh, other things you can get in other places. But what you gain is what Russia has to offer. So I don't think Russia is a bad place to live. But if you want the things that Russia doesn't offer, Russia could be the worst place to live. And maybe for me, with the exception of a desire for a certain amount more sunshine that I could have back home where there is 330 days of sunshine in Denver, Colorado, I've been giving up sunshine since I left. But what I gain in culture and living in this beautiful cultural city is worth something to me. And so, no, for me, Russia is not a bad place to live. Uh, it's just a place to live with its own set of rules and restrictions and possibilities. And if you can work within those freely, then it's a wonderful place to live. The first is learn the language. You need Russian in every day. You need at least some, even if it's 20 words, and you need to invest in learning more of it if you're going to stay here long term. The second is you need to have a kind of cultural awareness of what is the same here and what is different. That cultural awareness is really important, and you can gain it through being here, and you can gain it through keeping your eyes open and maybe not spending all your time with foreigners. The third thing is that you really have to have a love for this place. This place opens up to you if you care about it. If you don't care about it, it's a postcard. Take your three pictures, enjoy white nights, and go to a beach in Spain. Go somewhere beautiful, go somewhere warm, go somewhere with a different culture. But for Russia, you have to want to be here. And once you decide you want to be here, everything else opens up to you. Thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed this new video. If you like it, please click the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the bell if you wish to get notified for when I will be releasing my next video.